Uh, TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bell. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, I guess this is a weekend with Chopper Reed and Eric Banner. Eric Banner played Chopper Reed in the Chopper Reed movie, which I have seen. Um, I didn't know he had like a weekend to prepare with him though, so this should be funny. <laughs> right now, there's a mechanic it's working. A little bit funny. So when will it be? That's a sheep. Well, when it's going to be out is in the year 2000. Oh, don't keep me the day. I'm serious. What, what, you and me are sitting here surrounded by chooks for a movie that's going to be out in the year 2000? You are kidding me. <laughs> you are kidding me. The year 2000? The year 2000. The year 2000? Can you believe that? <laughs> you you you've agreed to do a movie that's going to come out in the year two thousand. Well, It'll be a good year, Mark. What uh? What year was this? Okay, not going to let me know. He's fairly young in this one. You fucking well want to be for Australian film. I don't think I ever seen a person just grab a chicken like that and I'm actually shook. I don't know. But it's not unusual, Mark. You know, a film like Shine, that's eight years. Eight years in development and shooting. Shine. Yeah. Well, I, I, honestly, I'm not being critical or anything, but honestly, once you get the funding, I, I would rock and roll with great haste. How can people of the people Eric was associated with punch out a good movie <clears throat> well not a bad film very good, very Australian film in no time flat and it takes you to the year 2000 <laughs> I'm not gonna lie this is a good insight to who he really was with as a younger dude hey Oh, come on, mate. Don't be like that. Just taking up the chook shit. Damn, Tom's I want to be alive to see this fucking thing. Oh, you'll be alive. God, mate, you think it could fucking happen. Is this the first time he's mentioned it to you? I'm going horse. You just had me hooking the cripple one. I'm not going to lie. This is L footage. This is L. This is an L angle. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be under Chopper Reed's crutch. This is not for me. I want to do a Paul Anza video. The time you said this video, well, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back and dead from waiting around. <laughs> nah, well. It does sound a long way away when you say you two did. No, hang on. You mean end of next year? Well, well basically, basically, we, we are talking. Oh, shit, no. That's fucking ah. two years. They oh, said it's to be you will stay until the day, you know, you will rot in Ace Vision. I said, I'll be out of here uh, this afternoon. So what age? You 20s? 30s? Just, no, I was 23. <laughs> oh, I'm doing that too. Anyway, um, I said, no, you won't. I said, yes, I will. I said, no, you won't. I said, yes, I will. Went back to the yard. They had this uh, National Geographic on Prof's. Prosthesis? Prosthesis. Yeah, yeah. Blake had a false hand made out of stainless steel. I said, I'll cut my bloody hand off with that sheet of tin over there that was against the wall, and I'll I'll get a hook put on my hand. They said, you idiot, they're not going to let you have a hook on your hand in jail to get a hook when you get out. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, correct. Correct them all, though. <laughs> right? So, um, I said, off it is. Get a razor blade. So, Kevin Taylor, the bloke that shot Pat Shannon, Got a razor blade, he wrapped it in toilet paper. Comes up to me, I said, no, I'm sitting there. Go. He's like this. Doing a slide. Oh, I said, oh, for God's sake. I said, just rip him off. That really?
really hurts. He's like this, didn't want to hurt me. And it's like this. Being, being oh, so delicate. You know? What is, he, is he in front of you? Well, he's in front of you. He's in front of you? He's here. Yeah. I'm there. Yeah. And I've got my arms folded. Yeah. Know, like this. You know? And he's like this. And I said, get with the program. <laughs> you know? Get them off. What are you doing? Oh. And he went. I said, the other one, the other one. I forgot that they got his ears off. Until he started telling the story, I didn't even realize he had no ears. And he went, Aah! oh, and he went, <laughs> and everyone freaked out. How many people were in there? Yeah, six. About six. And, and what do they, re what so do, they do? They jumped up on the benches. Well, yeah. they're all in the shower yard. They're all up on the, the shower bench where everyone, you know, has yeah. you know, this little bench pool. Which, which yard was it? Number one shower yard. Is that the one that's on the, the side that's covered so over? As soon as you work in the tunnel, it's the tier. first door. Yeah. First door on you. Right. Yeah. That's the number one shower yard. Yeah. And I've got a towel, put it over my head, like that. Yeah. I can feel all this hot water coming out. It's like hot water. It wasn't hot water. It was blood. Yeah. And, uh, so I started spinning out a bit. And Kevin Taylor picked the ears up. He picks the bloody blade up. He gives me the bloody blade. And I got the blade. Yeah. And then he says, oh, this all, you know, and then he's rushing out trying to say, oh, I'll get the blade off him, sir. Chop <laughs> 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 yeah. cut his ears off. And I'm going, yeah, I'll cut my ears off, you know? Because old Taylor would have gotten into heaps of trouble. Where did he even get the blade from, first of all? Me, yeah. I had the money. It looks so strange, a head, a head with no tic-tac, I mean a head with no um, ears. He looks like the tic-tac dude. They had bloody too much of it. And, and they, they live like pigs. You, know, you can walk into a... <laughs> biggest heroin dealer in the western suburbs. You can walk into his house and if you saw a turd sitting on the lounge room floor, it wouldn't be the first dirty thing you'd notice. You understand? It wouldn't be the first. It wouldn't be the first dirty thing you'd notice. I mean, he had last year's wheat bix dishes still sitting in the sink. Yeah. You know? I mean, I mean, this bloke lived like an animal, like a pig. He had six or seven TV sets stacked on top of each other. The first one was broken. He put a new one on top of that and plugged that. <laughs> and then that didn't break. He put a, it, 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 it. This insanity. And I walk in there. There's four TV sets stacked on top of it, but the top one worked. The other ones have been kicked in because of football games he didn't like. So he'd shoot the TV set, you know. <laughs> and um, mad thing, madness, you know, insanity, yeah. you know. <coughs> who lived with him? Did someone live with him? He had a wife who was a heroin addict. Mm. Yeah. His wife who was a heroin addict? I mean, they, these people had a lot of money, but they lived like animals. And they were fair game. So he was a heroin dealer and his wife was an addict. Yin and yang, that's tough. Well, I was a fucking problem, you know. So I made a fortune of these characters. Yeah? I used to walk around here and I used to say, listen, uh, here you go. Here you hold the cash. I'm a bit broke. And I said, well, I can't help you. Well, I said, well, listen, I'll tell you what. You try getting from where you're sitting to the front door. He's probably going to shoot you from where you're sitting at the front door because that's, that's about as long as you've got to get me some money right now. <laughs> I've got 60 seconds, 60 seconds to produce some money or I'm going to fucking shoot you. One, two, three, four, let's start arguing. Let's say, oh, I haven't got any money. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, <laughs> twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. <laughs> I haven't got any money. I love this. 18, 19, 20. I haven't got any money. I haven't got any money. 20, 20. <coughs> 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. The money would come. Yeah. yeah. And Did you do it just like that? I knew they had the money. Yeah. But you're very polite and friendly. Oh, so listen, oh, so listen. You're making a fortune. Someone a heroin all over the western suburbs. Yeah. I, I haven't come to ask you for your redundancy package. You know? I haven't come to ask you for your, for your widowed mother's pension. You know? I'm, I'm, I'm asking you for 10 grand out of the 60 I know you just picked up on Sunday. Simple. I'm taxing y'all. 
Y'all doing that? Y'all my, and I don't really like it. I'm taxing you. Mm. Oh, they, they didn't like part with it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like part with it. They didn't want to do part with it. Yeah. But, oh, I'm sorry. But they did part with it. Oh, they loathed party with it. They would suit the same blokes from my club on Sunday. Yeah. Right. And how would they be then? Oh, they'd have all the gang there with them. Ready to rock and roll. Yeah. And what happens then? I just walk up and say, how are you boys? <laughs> I throw a few bumps in the bar and say, would you like a drink? <laughs> <laughs> would you like a drink? You may as well, it's your money. <laughs> 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 well, they hated me, they hated me. Yeah. You know? but, but, but It's like you, you go to jail. I feel like, was this a scene in the movie too? You said, you're worried about your wife, you're worried about your family, you've got 70 years. Bloody well crying in your sort of night time. I feel like I'm actually sitting in the kitchen. It's a W editing. Like I'm standing. Like I'm right here. Y'all see where I'm at? Like that's my seat. The bloke that hands out the clothes is giving you shit to wear. The bloke that hands out the radios is giving you a busted radio. The bloke that hands out the TV sets is giving you a busted TV set. You don't know nothing how the jail works. It's just surrounded by people. Uh, you go to clean your teeth and someone's pitch your toothbrush. <laughs> you know, you go, you go to your cell and someone's gone into your cell and shit on your bed. Just because you're on your own, you've got no friends. It's, it's an animal place, right? Yeah. Suddenly, a bloke with no ears walks up to you. What's your name? Oh, my name's Eric. How tall are you, Eric? Oh, six two. How much do you weigh? I'm going to kill her. Eric, you punched the cunt out of half this fucking jar. What are you sitting there with tears in your eyes for? Oh, my wife, and, you know, there's blokes over there, you know, they come from where I live, and they reckon I own money, and, and, uh, and blah, 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 blah. I remember this scene, too. Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Hmm. I'll tell you what, Eric. Yeah, you yeah. You look like a bad bloke. I'll go over and sort them blokes out for you. We'll fix this problem up for you. Yeah, I remember this. So I gave a word to these folks and I talked to them. My favourite trick was, I used to go out to them and I'd say, is that bloke over there? I said, I like that bloke. He's going to be a new member of my crew. He's a fucking idiot. Well, he won't be an idiot in about two months' time after he stabbed about, after he stabbed about 20 of us. <laughs> because I intend to arm him up. <laughs> right? I says, and that idiot over there crying... After watching this, it makes me realize how good of an actor Eric Bana is. Because all of these stories that he's telling him, he did them in the film. I remember this. Like, I remember it. <laughs> and it really sound like him. Look like him, everything. Mannerisms and all. Who you can't have been standing over is going to be in my crew. And I'm going to give him a bloody great big tomahawk. And I says, what's more, you're not going to be sending your mates around to pick on his wife and wife. And all this money he, you reckon he owes you, that's cancelled. That's cancelled. By the way, how is your mother in Preston Street, Ascot Vale? Is she well? Is she? <laughs> you want to rock and roll? Let's party. No, 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 That idiot over there is now in my crew. And I'm going to arm him up in about 20 minutes time, right? And I'm going to tell him if he wants to stab the guts out of you, there'll be no comeback. Will there? No, 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 look, this has gone too far. This has gone too far. No, but look, 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 we only had a blue with the bloke on the outside, but we thought he'd give us up. We thought he'd give us up over that armed uh, robbery. No, 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 we, we could be wrong, we could be wrong, you know? And, he, you know, I've got no trouble with his wife. And, 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 and it's only Bill who reckons he owes us the money. Oh, no, no, we'll, we'll sort it out. This Aussie accent, this Australian accent is crazy. <laughs> we'll sort it out. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Every single one of us is going to go up and apologise and say, I'm sorry for upsetting you, Eric. Because Eric's in our crew now. Right? Mm. And we may or we may not stab the shit out of you by tea time. Right? Mm. 
go back, everyone's armed up in 20 minutes' time. Instead of cr- crying and being all alone, the next thing you know, Eric's down on the muscle line, suddenly he's wearing an overcoat. Oh, oh, it's 90 degrees in the fucking shade. I'm sweating like a pig. Oh, what's this? That's a fucking tomahawk. Oh, my God. Yeah, the screws are patting him down. They feel the bloody tomahawk. They look at him and go like that. <laughs> Because he's standing next to me. They go, oh, another recruit. <laughs> How many we stay all through? I go, oh. <laughs> and, um, because there is nothing more frightening in jail. So, what does he do in his comedy routines? Does he just stand up and talk about what's. <laughs> because this is good enough. Honestly, I'm fully intrigued. I'm listening like I didn't see the movie. Well, like. oh, than a, than a psycho. You can be a professional criminal, you can be a professional bank robber, you can be a professional thief. You can be a professional, anything you like, but the most feared thing in a prison, the most feared thing in the criminal world is a uh, fucking sight. And, and basically these crims didn't come from my background. These were, these were middle class people from middle class neighbourhoods that had got into crime. Yeah. They had no re- reason to even be in my world. You know? I didn't pick on blokes from my own, from my own background. Yeah. You know, these people were the, you know, his father was a brain surgeon. He was a neurosurgeon. <laughs> oh, man. That's how I be nowadays. Everybody want to be a gangster. You have a, you ha- you live in the suburbs in a million dollar home. Both parents. And you have a college degree. What are you doing? <laughs> You have know, people who've done three or four years in university who's, who's um, who speak three or four languages. See what I'm talking about? World, See? Who've been part of the cafe latte bloody set and the next thing you know, they go to Bangkok and meet some little gook who wants to sell them some, and the next thing you know, they're drug lords. Then they meet me, the real thing, right? And they've got to part with their money. Then these characters have got to sit down and try to figure out a gang war. To go to, to go to war with someone, and, and this is not part of their culture. Uh, actually, the drug world has invited into it a whole heap of people that don't belong to the criminal world. They're not the apprentices. They, have, they don't belong to the criminal world. They've never done a day's jail. Mm. Then they bump into characters like me. Oh. Characters mm. like you who really pull in their cards. <laughs> we, did, we never counted on this. Gee, we didn't, we didn't, you know, we didn't expect this, you know? And their, their, their Zegna suits or whatever it is and their mobile phones and their bloody BMWs. I mean, you can't, you can't kill people by belt overhead with your American Express card. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, people would see me in my club and they'd say, blind, drunk, you know, falling asleep on me, spaghetti, and <laughs> oh, they'd say, oh, he's, he hasn't got long to go. But as Churchill said, like Lady Astor said to Churchill, Sir, you are drunk. And he said, Madam, you are ugly. (laughs) (laughs) I should have been dead a dozen times. The time I fell asleep in the tenant restaurant, face down in my speedy marinara with my gun on the table, and they escorted me, and these people were friends of all, and they escorted me to the toilets, cleaned me up and gave me my gun back. It was a miracle. That was a miracle. So, I wouldn't say that my survival was a result of my genius. What did you say? It was luck then? More as a result of their stupidity. 16th, uh, we're back in 16th century Italy, right? Okay. And um, there was this lady, she was unmarried, which was a great city. We were in the days of the Inquisition. And uh, there was a lady called Camilla, and she was unmarried. She has a, a child, and the child was born a cripple. The child's name's Hooky. The, the cripple's got a, a hunched back, like the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> chop it, chop it, chop. But anyway, she takes in washing and she does people's laundry. She works to her fingers to the bone to bring up this cripple. But because, I keep saying it like that. Because he was a cripple, he was never allowed into church. And uh, because they, they thought it was bad luck. And she named the cripple Hookie. And every day, Hookie the cripple. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> hey. 
That's not funny. Used to walk down the main street <laughs> of Castle Manieri. People, right? Walk down the main street. And every day he used to have to pass Manuela the Butcher. Now Manuela the Butcher was a big merchant. Big merchant. And uh, he had relatives in the Vatican. He had relatives who were members of the Inquisition. He had uncles that were cardinals. He had all this sort of stuff, you know. He was a very wealthy merchant. And he had butcher shops all over the kingdom of Italy, in the kingdom of Naples, in the kingdom of Verona. He had butcher shops in Sicily, he had everything. You know? And every day he would rush out of his butcher shop and he'd say, Hooky! I'm telling you, you know, mate, you know, walk past my butcher shop. You do the rotten cripple. And he'd, and he'd kick Hooky into the gutter, he'd kick him into the mud, he'd spit on him and he'd say, you do the rotten cripple. And Hooky just used to cop a sweet, you know, because he used to go. I'm not gonna lie, this is a, uh, he has a great Italian accent. And every day, day the main street to help the fishermen mend their nets. Trying to be a good boy. He trying to be a good boy. Every day, work his fingers. Now, what y'all not gonna do is. Okay, we get it. We, he's telling the story. He's telling the story. I already said he got great mannerism. I already got one video blocked today. They're not going to give me twice. Okay, and this will do it. So don't even. Oh, they're just replaying all the Eric Bent, uh, all the parts. Okay. We've seen the movie, y'all. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.